Hello everybody. Well, it's coming up to autumn time and it's time to start sowing some of the autumn planting uh, plants like garlic, onions, bald beans, for example. But today I'm just going to start preparing and showing and sharing with you our garlic varieties and um, what we're going to be doing uh, in a day or two's time for planting them. I normally like to plant my garlic in late September um, and the reason I do that is because when I went to the garlic farm at the Isle of Wight that's when they told me that you should really plant your autumn garlic but this year um, it's been so wet that I haven't been able to prepare the plot to get the garlic in for September but I've got some space now and I will be doing that in a day or two so I'm just getting out my garlic uh, to have a little look at them because it was a while ago since I bought them and um, to share with you uh, what they look like and what I'm going to do with them. Uh, yeah. So every year I buy my garlic bulbs from the uh, Isle of Wight garlic farm but they have an ex exhibition at the Hampton Court Garden Show in London. Uh, so that's where I actually go and see them and buy my plants. Oh, sorry, not plants, my bulbs. Um, it just saves on the postage and packing. But for some reason this year, they didn't have all of the varieties that I normally plant. So I normally, after a, a lot of trial, growing different varieties of garlic, the ones that tended to do better on my plot and it's going to be very different from for everybody um, but the two that I found did well for me was uh, Rhapsody White and Maddock White and they were the two that I normally sort of plant every year now um, but maybe trialing one or two because you never know you might find something else that does really well on your site but unfortunately, uh, they only had the uh, Rhapsody White and they didn't have the Maddock White. So I had to buy some Province, Province, Province White. Um, so I don't know what these are going to be like. So here on this side, these are the uh, Rhapsody White bulbs. And normally, when I get them from Hampton Court, they're really, really big bulbs. Um, this year, the bulbs are really, really small. And this could be due to the weather. It was such a wet start to the year. It may well be when I get them from Hampton Court, they're really, really big bulbs. Um, this year, the bulbs are really, really small. And this could be due to the weather. It was such a wet start to the year. It may well be that the crop haven't done particularly well and that may also be the reason why they haven't got any of the Maddock White this year. They may have be selling it online because it may have um, come a little bit later before the show. Uh, so they may have some online, but I didn't want to then pay all the postage for the postage and packing and everything on top of the price of the garlic. Um, the reason is that I do like their garlic bulbs, but they are expensive. Um, these cost, I think it was, um, I think these were 10 pounds for three bulbs. So it works out to about three pound 30 a bulb. So they're not cheap uh, buying them from there. Uh, which is why I don't want to pay the postage and packing on top of that. So I did buy some of these uh, Rhapsody White and some P Province White. And the ones in the middle here are some of the larger bulbs that I saved from our own seeds this year. So I'm hoping that these will be Maddock White. Um, um, as I said, I bought these at the Hampton court garden show which was some months ago and it's really important that you store them well uh, until you're ready to plant them i took them out of the bag 
and just put them on an open tray like this, as you can see here, just out on a, a tray with the varieties underneath and I put something in between so they didn't roll, <laughs> roll along. Um, but if you leave them in the bag, sometimes they can sweat, even if it's a paper bag. And definitely, definitely take it out of the carrier bags that they give you to bring them home in. So keeping them nice and um, cool and dry and airy is really important if you're buying your bulbs early. Because uh, you need to store them really well so that they're fit to plant uh, now. My plan is to plant these uh, early next week, so that's in a day or two's time, um, because I wouldn't normally start splitting the bulbs until I was actually going to plant them. But I thought um, it's not going to be great weather on Monday and I need to just get them in and plant them as quickly as possible, so I might not be able to have the time to make a video. So I thought I'd share this with you now, and it's also warmer and drier here. So I'll get uh, one of these uh, Rhapsody Whites here and just show you these bulbs. So as I said, these are a lot smaller than normal. Normally, this is one that we saved last year from our own sets. They're even normally far bigger than this. So you can see uh, the difference in the quality, which is why I didn't mind paying the amount of money you pay for them because they were very big bulbs, good quality. So I'm not sure what these are gonna be like this year. Hopefully we'll get something from them, um, but I'm glad that I saved a couple of my own. So I, I just think it's like a lot of things this year, the weather has hit a lot of things. So. When you've got your bulb of garlic, you need to just take off this dry outside um, stuff and just peel it off nice and gently like that until you can get to the cloves. Now, all of this garlic is autumn sown garlic. You do get a spring sowing garlic as well, but I, I don't grow spring planting garlic at all. I only, I only plant the autumn. So once you get down to picking some of this white outer um, leaf stuff off, you can see you can just break the cloves, start to break the cloves. It doesn't matter if that bit comes off, but what you do need to be careful of is the base plate, so the bottom here, where you've broken the clove from the bulb, because that's where the roots are gonna come out. So what I do is I break all of these off, like this. Peeling away the outer leaf stuff. Whoop. Right, so I've managed to get three, six, seven, seven cloves from this bulb. Now, I know it's not rocket science, but we might as well just check it. When you're planting the garlic, where you've taken it off the bulb here, the base plate, that's down. So you plant it down like that. And this pointy top here is the up. So you pop it in. And you pop it in twice the depth of the bulb itself. So I usually do two or three inches. Um, this will help it really root well, but it also stops the birds pulling it up, which frequently happens. So now I, I do bury them at least two to three inches below the surface of the ground. Um, and I only plant the larger, plumper 
cloves. I don't, I mean, as it happens, hang on, let me just split this up because I think this is more than one clove. Yeah, it is. So I don't really plant these smaller uh, cloves, just these bigger, plumper, outer ones. But what I do with these is that you can either, if you've got a little patch on your allotment or garden or even a pot, pop these into the ground and what they do is they grow a bit like um, chives and you can use them in the spring uh, as green green garlic or just chop them up, uh, cut them and chop them up and use them like garlic chives. So you still can grow them, uh, but if you can't be bothered with that or you don't have the space, you can just cook with them. They're just like any other garlic, but they're not really worth, they don't tend to make a decent sized bulb. So I only plant the bigger, fatter uh, cloves that you get in the bowl. So I'll put all of these back on here. Um, and I will do the same when I get down to the allotment with all of these other bulbs. And because uh, I'm not growing all of them, all the small bulbs, then I always keep back a few more than I think that I'm going to want and I always buy a few more because out of each bulb you'll probably only get about maybe six decent sized cloves. So these were all the the garlic bulbs I bought from uh, the Isle of Wight garlic farm. But the other day I was wandering around the garden centre and I happened to find or come across and just move this bit of mess over here please um and this is lesser dawn and this is thermidor and this is a french red and a french white garlic and they're only £1.50 per bulb. Again they're not great big bulbs like I would normally get from uh, the Isle of Wight but I thought here's an opportunity to try a couple of other varieties that I wouldn't normally grow um, and I'm not buying all of these for myself either. Somebody else wanted some and said if I saw some garlic in, in the garden centre could I pick them some up. So I slipped in a couple of extra ones for myself. And I thought, well, if I put in eight to 10 bulbs, uh, sorry, eight to 10 cloves for myself, I can try two other varieties. And at £1.50 a bulb, that's a really good price. So this one is the uh, French white Messador. And I'll put the names up for you. And to be fair, they're not a bad size. Let me just show you one of these. I mean, obviously, I mean, that's the smaller of the bulbs that I got from the garlic farm. And this is probably one of the bigger ones. So you can see that, you know, they're, they're a decent size a bulb for £1.50. Um, definitely worth it. It's just a shame that they don't have the varieties, the autumn varieties that, that I like. But I'm going to think about that. If they, these grow well next year, I'm going to consider what varieties I will grow. So I did buy some of these. And like the other bulbs, I shall just use the bigger cloves for growing. Um, and then I'm going to share some of the others. So I bought... I bought six bulbs, which is a bargain for £1.50 each. I think they're great. Um, and I got them at the garden centre. So I'm supporting our local business. And I haven't had to pay any um, postage and packing. So I think that's a real bargain. So I bought six of those, which I shall share with the person who wanted some. 
and I bought six of the French, the French red uh, germador. And I have heard people growing these before and said that they were very, they were, they had had a lot of success with it. But I, I haven't done that. Well, I may have done, but it didn't grow particularly well for me, so I didn't do them again. Um, these bulbs are slightly smaller, but if I show you again the the ones I got from the garlic farm, they're not that they're they're quite good considering. Um, you know that's that's probably a bigger bulb. So they're, you know, compatible with the garlic farm ones. If anything, some of them are actually a lot bigger. Um, so again, that's great value for £1.50. So support your local garden centres. So these are the red. And I, for some reason, I do prefer the, the red garlic. I think I just like the colour. Um, I can't remember what they say about the, the difference between the red and the white garlic. I think one's got a stronger flavour, but I'm not 100% sure. But I'm going to enjoy growing these two new varieties, trying to test something out. And um, I'm sure that you'll be joining me next week when I'm planting them. So I've got some onion sets. I don't normally grow from onion sets, but <clears throat> well, that's not the truth. Usually I do grow from onion sets, but every single year they go to seed. They bolt by the time it comes to spring. So I've been really, really disappointed. So I've been trying to now grow from uh, seed, um, but habits die hard. And I was in the garden center and I just couldn't resist. Now, my normal onion set are these Japanese ones. Um, and has it got the name on it? Let's just have a look. No, it just says Japanese onion sets. I normally use those and they bolt. Uh, but this year I was looking at the sets themselves and they're actually very small sets. I mean, there's a couple of half decent ones in there. But I bought a packet. And then as I was kind of looking around, I saw that there were some other uh, autumn sowing onions, autumn champions. I've never grown these before, but the sets were a lot better. They were a lot bigger sets. So I thought I'll just buy a packet of those as well. So I'm gonna pop these in. It's only 2.49, so I haven't lost a lot if they do bolt. So I'm gonna pop these in now and I'll show you that. Under the fleece, uh, a couple of, well, about a week ago, I put some onion seeds that I've grown. Again, these are, I think they were, I don't know what they were actually, uh, Sturon, I think, or no, they were tough ball. Um, they're doing kind of okay, but it's not helped by the foxes are jumping all over it. So, I'm hoping that they will do, they won't bolt uh, next year. But as I said, I'm putting in some of these sets as a backup. And I've made the holes along here and I'm just gonna pop them in. So I shall choose some of the larger, some of the larger onions. to plant so that's the bottom and that's the top so that's the top of the onion and that's the bottom little hairy whisks coming out and I'm just gonna pop it in the hole this is probably a little bit deep but I found last time just so it's near the surface I found last time that when I planted them with their necks showing as they suggest you plant it so they suggest that you plant them up to their shoulders so if you get about that much sticking out I found that the birds came along and pulled them all out 
and last year I planted them deeper. That way the roots get started and the tops start to come out and then when the birds try to pull them out they're far far better anchored and I don't have a lot pulled out of the ground at all. So I'm going to finish this row and pop the onion sets in here and then like so and then I shall cover them up. Would you believe it? So I've planted the onions and some garlic and these are some elephant gar garlic. You can see they're huge. And, and I popped them in to the holes and I went down, I've been 10 minutes to go and get a hoe to cover them up and the birds have already pulled them out. So that's how quick these little birds can be. Uh, would you believe it, eh? They're faster than the average bear boo-boo. So I popped in four rows of garlic at the end, which is this end, is a row of Rhapsody White. Then the French uh, Red, which I think is Germador, but I'm not exactly sure. And then I've put in a row of uh, our home saved garlic and a row of the garlic uh, French white. So that's all planted now. I'm so pleased. Uh, and there is the allotment cat, Georgie. Hello, Georgie. Say hello. <laughs> Who is the world's best mouser is all I can say. So it, it's beginning to rain and I'm gonna be going home shortly. Just got them in in time. I've just lifted the temporary uh, netting off the purple sprout in broccoli and the calettes and they are absolutely gorgeous, I must say. Um, these were getting a bit squashed and that's why they're a bit flat and buckled. So now we've just taken the netting off and going to try and put some taller netting on. But I'm staking up the purple sprout in broccoli. This is uh, this back row, or the couple of rows here actually, are claret, which is our favorite. And that doesn't actually come into fruit until, um, well, for harvesting about, I don't know, probably, maybe about March, April time. And then I put in a row of, I think it was Rudolph here that come into to harvest about December, January time, uh, but certainly before the claret. And that's this row here. Um, and, and the plants are looking just so nice and healthy. They're brilliant. Um, but I'm gonna stake them up a bit because once they get growing and then they get all of the shoots on the top, they get top heavy. Uh, I really need some more of these uh, bars, which is a lot stronger than just a bamboo cane. And the bamboo canes really aren't tall enough, so I better get myself a bit more prepared for next year. But the um, calettes over here, I mean, they're stunningly beautiful. The leaves and everything else, uh, as well as being delicious. And you can just see some of the calets beginning to start. And that kind of fills the gap between the autumn bits and pieces and for the purple sprouting broccoli to start. Uh, so I just can't get over how beautiful color the calets are. Stunning. So I'm going through, I'm trying to remove a lot of these lower, the lower leaves because they're not really needed. So I'm just trying to clean up the bottom stems uh, here. The plant doesn't need these stems either, so it just makes it tidier and it just stops the slugs and snails a bit, keeps it nice and clean. Well, I must say that was a marathon of a task 
Um, so you can see they're nice and clean along the roots, along the stems, sorry. They're all tied up. I'm not sure how much of a help it will be, but it, I'm sure it will be more of a help than if I didn't do it. And you can actually see, because we're no dig, how very, very few weeds we have. We have a little bit, but not too much. Um, yeah, so now all that's left to do is to re-net them and then home for a cup of tea. Whoa, after a very busy day, that's the brassicas all netted and ready for winter. They're looking good. So that's the purple sprouting broccoli, the kaylets under there are a couple of, under the white hoop under there. Um, I think there's some cauliflowers and a couple of red cabbages, but it's all looking really nice. So I hope you enjoyed following me planting the garlic and cleaning up the brassicas. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy growing. Take care now. Bye-bye.